Hello everyone, my name is Shambhavi and welcome back to my channel Fun with Data Science. So basically this is the third lecture of the English series which is going on and today we are going to discuss about the dictionaries, if else and elif condition. Then we'll move on to for loop, while loop, shorthand if else and let's see do we cover functions and doc strings or not. So basically without wasting time, let me take you to this PyCharm ID. So this is the PyCharm ID in which we write codes and we run that, we make projects and all that things. So firstly, let me tell you that in the last video, we have discussed about the lists and tuples. So basically lists were denoted by the large brackets. Let me take you to one note and what I discussed was that these brackets are for used for the list, right? If you remember and if you have watched that video. And after that, these small brackets were used to denote the tuples, okay? So these two are the main things what about the list and tuples, about the, you can say, denotion of list, list and tuples. And after that, let, let's say, I wrote this curly braces. So this curly braces, it's for dictionaries. D-I-C-T-I-O-N-A-R-I-E-S. So basically dictionaries, which are the third data type which we study, which are which we are going to study. These are the dictionaries and they are always written inside the curly braces. So this is the basic difference which, which differentiates between list tuples and dictionaries. And I also told you about the mutable and immutable concept. And now, now today I'm not going to revise that. And if you want to see that mutable and immutable concept, then you can refer to my previous video that is given in the description. You can even check that. Okay. So now let, let's start writing about the code. And let's say I wrote this D1. And simply what I did that D1 is equal to the curly braces okay and after this curly braces this i has told i told you that these curly braces are the denotion for dictionaries so as i write this d1 is equal to these curly braces after that when i'm going to print the type of d1 let's run and it is going to give me the type as dictionary that is you can say dict okay so here i got the answer that is class dict now let's see that how do we write a dictionary so for writing a dictionary we have this process like let's say i made a variable that is d2 okay and after making this variable d2 i use this curly braces which we use for writing dictionaries and after that what i'm going to do that in dictionary there are two things that is the key and the, you can say value or element. So this is basically the one which is written on the left hand side of the colon is the key, right? And the things and the like string, whichever is written on the right hand side of the colon, they are, you can say they are known as values or you can even name this as elements, okay? So here I had taken a name Mira and let's say Mira eats noodles. Okay, so in this Mira is the key and this noodles are the elements as I told you that the things written on the left hand side are the keys and things written on right side of the colon are the elements or you can say values. Okay, then after that I separated using a comma and then I wrote Rhea, let's say Rhea eats burger. Okay, and after that let's say Priya drinks coffee. So this, this was the list. Okay. And after that, I had taken some more topics and let's say Muskan. Okay, now Muskan wants to spend her weekend like shopping and going to movie and enjoying. So I made this value, this key as Muskan and after that I made a separate dictionary for Muskan. Let's say in the separate dictionary on Monday, uh, Muskan wants to go for shopping. So for that, what I wrote is that M and then shopping. Okay. After that, let's say Muskan uh, on Tuesday, Muskan wants to go for movie. So I write T and then movie. And let's say on Wednesday, Muskan wants to go for picnic. So what I wrote that W and let's say this picnic. So here I wanted to tell you that we can even make a dictionary inside a dictionary. Okay. So what I did, I made a different and a separate dictionary for Muskan.
now this is how we write and this is how we declare our dish v and after that when i'm going to print d2 the output which i'm going to get is my whole dictionary and let me exceed it okay so like mira noodles Ria burger and all that things which we have written and for Muskan I got a separate dictionary that is Monday shopping, Tuesday movie, Wednesday picnic and all that things. Okay, so this is how we write a dictionary and this is how we print a dictionary. Now let's say I want to access any element of my dictionary. Let's say I want I want the element which is stored in Ria. Okay, so for Ria. Ria is the key and the element which is stored in Ria is burger, right? So when I'm going to run my program, I would be getting the output as burger, okay? So this is the way how we, uh, you can say how we access a value from a key. Like I wrote print D2, D2 is my dictionary name and in bracket I wrote Ria. So the value or you can say element which is associated with Ria, I will get the output here as this. So what I got the output was burger, okay? Now, let's say I want to access that Muskan dictionary because I had made this Muskan, a, uh, given a Muskan, a different dictionary, okay? So let's say I want to access this. So for that, what I'm going to write is print and in brackets, I'm going to write my dictionary name. After that, I'm going to write the key, okay? The main key that is Muskan, that is the name, okay? And then in the six separate braces, I'm going to write that in this Muskan, which key I want to access. Let's say I want to access Wednesday. Okay. So for Wednesday, now here I'm go going to get the output as picnic. And let's say I'm only going to write this W. I'm not writing Muskan here. So how it will get that from where I need to take that W? Because I have made a separate dictionary for Muskan. So for that, if I want to access any, any element from this dictionary, that is Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. So I, I would be needing this Muskan name also in the print statement. Okay. So now when I'm going to run it, I'm getting the output as picnic. I hope this must be clear to you that how do we access this, you can say dictionary. Okay. Now just let me comment this out. Fine. Now let's say I was making my dictionary and in that I forgot to enter a name. I forgot to enter one name that was similar. So now what is the way for adding this similar into our dictionary? So the way is that firstly we need to write our dictionary name that is D2 and then in brackets I need to write the name which I forget. Okay. So it is like uh, I wrote my dictionary name that is D2 and in brackets I wrote Simran and I assigned it a value as South Indian. Let's say that Simran eats South Indian. Okay. So this is the way how we add an element to our dictionary. Okay. So now when I'm going to run this my D2 dictionary, I would be getting this Simran also. Let's you can see it here. Okay. Let me zoom it and hold on. Let me take it the side. So this, this, this is Simran and this is the South Indian. Okay, so this one new element has been added to our dictionary that is D2. So this is how we add an element into our dictionary. So I hope I made all these things clear to you. And now let's say I added that same Simran. Okay, and now I want to delete that. For that, what I'm going to write is del. Del is for deleting that element and del then i'm going to write my dictionary name that is d2 and in brackets i'm going to write that name whatever i want to delete so let's see i uh, let's say i want to delete simran so what i wrote is that del del is for deleting then my dictionary name that is d2 and in brackets i wrote simran and after that when i'm going to print my dictionary that is d2 okay so here what's the error okay let, let me hold on let me and comment all these okay fine now let's run this and see what i got the output is that i got mira i got ria then i got ria the side then i got muskan also and at muskan this this dictionary ended i did not got simran here why because i used this you can say the syntax that is del and D2 Simran. So it deleted this Simran element from my dictionary and printed the whole dictionary like that only. 
after deleting the simran right okay so now let's say i stored hold on let me comment and comment okay now let's say i wrote, I wrote d3 is equal to d2 and d3 is equal to d2 dot copy now i'm copying my whole list that is d2 into d3 so what i wrote for that is d3 is equal to d2 dot copy okay i use the copy function here and after that when i'm going to print my d2 i'm going to get the whole like you can see this upper one i have not commented the upper side hold on hold on let me do that okay so where's my cursor right okay let me comment that out and here what i did i had copied the whole d2 that, that is my dictionary into d3 and now when i'm going to print it i'm going to get the desired output that is my dictionary okay now let's say i write print d2 dot get mirror and when i'm going to run this d2 dot get mirror what i'm going to get is noodles right so okay let me tell you how See, see this uh, dish ray that is D2. In Mira, what I stored was noodles, right? So when I'm going to write that print D2 dot get Mira, so whatever element or you can say whatever value is stored in Mira, I'm going to get that output. That is noodles beside, okay? And now, okay, I have printed that whatever the element yeah, or you can say value is there with Mira? I got that as the output, which was noodles. And now, if I want to update that noodles to chocolate, so what I'm going to write is that d2 dot update, and in braces, I'm going to write Mira, the name for which I want to update. That is my key. And after that, I'm going to write the updated value. So basically, previously in Mira. I have stored noodles this side, right? And when I'm going to update this mirror, uh, update this noodles from chocolate, so I'm going to write d2 dot update. Now here I'm going to use my update function, okay? So I wrote d2 dot update and in braces I wrote my key that is mirror and the changed element which I want to update is the chocolate, okay? And finally when I'm going to run that d2 and let me come in the above one hold on okay so see in mira what i got is chocolate right so this is how we update if we want to update any element of your dictionary so this is how you do that okay now uh, okay now the last thing for dictionary comes is that if you want to print the keys of your dictionary so I told you about the keys that keys are the names which I was taking like keys are Mira, Ria, Priya, Muskan and all these things. So what I told about the keys was keys are the val keys are the things which are retained in the left hand side of the colon. So here when I'm going to access this print d2 dot keys and when I'm going to run it I'm going to get all the names. See it is saying that dictionary keys big keys that is dictionary keys are mira ria priya and muskan so i hope you got the point about the dictionaries that how we perform uh, you can say perform functions on dictionaries how we declare dictionaries how we access the elements of dictionaries how we update any element how we delete any element and all these stuff which i told you okay so if this is here we completed our dictionary now I'm taking you to if else and elif conditions and yeah I know you all must be familiar with all these conditions but let, let me take you to them and let me comment this out after that what I am going to do is that okay so here what I did is that I had taken two variables that is var1 and var2 then what i did is that i stored a value one in my var one and value two in my var two so this this thing must be clear to you all as we are seeing these things and studying these things since the starting of all the lectures so this is the thing which must be clear to you okay so and after that 
I had taken a third variable also. Okay, and for this, this is the way of taking the input from user. Okay, so let, let me write a message also that enter. Okay, enter the third number. And let me put a goal in for like you can say for looking nice. Okay, so now here I had taken another variable that is bar three, and I have taken the integer input from the user. And how do I guess that I had taken integer input? So this is the thing which tells me int that I have taken an integer input from the user. And if I had written here float, so that means the user has to give float input. Okay. So that float means decimal values and if I haven't written anything here, so it means that you are asking the user for the string value, right? Okay, so here I have declared three variables var1, var2, var3 and assigned the values to it and now, now I'm going to use some if and else conditions. So basically if and else, if and else conditions are here like I wrote if, I want that if var3 that is the value which is in var3 is greater than the value in var2 then print me greater okay and and after that else okay else print lesser so if my condition that is var3 is greater than var2 if my condition satisfies then i am going to get the output as greater here and if my condition does not satisfy so this loop will go to else and in else what I have print is lesser. So it will print me the output as lesser. I hope you got the point that how we use if and else conditions. Let's say I have these three numbers and I want to check that if var3 is greater than var2. And that means if the value which is stored in variable 3 is greater than the value stored in var2 then print me greater and if this condition satisfies this first condition that is for the if if this condition satisfies then i'm going to get the output that is greater right and if this condition does not satisfy then i'm going to get the output that is lesser now i hope if you have listened my words very clearly and you can say if you are being Paying total attention towards the words what I am saying, then you must have got the whole and the proper idea about the if else, if and else condition. So now when I am going to run my program, let's check these outputs and let me zoom it. So it is directly asking me to enter the third number. Why? Because I have already entered the variable 1 and the variable 2. Okay. So the, this time I am going to enter the greater value. So I am going to enter 3 here and when i'm going to enter it is going to give me the output that is greater and why it is going to give me the output greater because in my if condition i have said if my the value which is stored in var3 is greater than var2 then give me the output as greater so here i uh, i in i input the value that is 1 in var2 and i store the value 2 that is in var2 then i ask the user for the input and then i enter the value for the third number as three and yeah this is obviously true that three is always greater than two so you, you can say that there is no dilemma in saying that variable three that the three var three is greater than two so i'm going to get the output here as greater and let's let's one more runs this program run and now I'm going to give a smaller value to variable 3. Okay, so now here I'm going to input the value as let's say 1. So now let me take a upside and now I'm going to get the output that is lesser. Why? Because I entered the first condition that if my var 3 is greater than var 2. So this condition doesn't satisfy here because 1 isn't greater than 2. Right? So here it go it will go to else condition and the print statement whatever it will get in else it will print me that output so here i have written lesser so i am getting the output as lesser here so i hope you got the point about the if and else condition 
Now let's say if in my this program only I want to check that if variable 2 and variable 3 have equal values then print me that they are equal. So now here here comes the role of the elif conditions. So how we write elif it is something like we write l el and after that we write if. Okay, so the ones who have studied C and C++, they must be knowing it in a form like else if condition. So in Python, we use it L like L if. We don't use else if. We use L if. So it is basically E L I F. And after that, I had given this condition that if my variable 3, like the value which is in variable 3 is equal equal to the value which is in variable 2, then print me equal. Okay. So now when I'm going to run this program, so like uh, in my variable 2, I have stored the value as 2. So now in my third variable also, I'm going to give the value as 2. And when I run it, I'm getting the output that is equal. So like because, because 2 is equal equal to 2. So that this condition satisfies here and I got the output as equal. So I hope you have got a proper idea about the use of if else and elif conditions that how we use these conditions and what's the role of these conditions okay now let me take you to a little bit okay let me let me comment all these things once and let's see a example using in the list okay so here what i have done is that i have taken a list okay so i have given it a name as list one and then I have stored these 1, 4 and 7, these 3 elements in my list. And in the starting of this lecture only, I have told you that how we declare a list. So we use these large brackets to write a list or you can say to declare a list. Okay. So I have written a list 1 and given it a value of 1 for 7. And now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to write my if condition if 15 in list one okay hold on okay so I have, if i retain that if 15 in list one okay first let me write a number that is there in my list so if i wrote if one in list one then print me yes it's in the list and if one not in list one print no it's not in the list okay so here what i have done i had taken a number from my list and i asked if one in list one they print me that yes it's in the list and if one not in list one then print no it's not in the list okay so now when i'm going to run this i'm going to get the output yes it's in the list why because you see this list that is list one which i have written and here i have given three elements and this three elements in these three elements one is also an element right so when it is satisfies the condition that yes one is in your list one so it is going to give you the output yes it's in the list and let's say i'm going to write a number that is not present in this list okay so i i, I wrote two. and now when i'm going to run this it's going to give me the output that no it's not in the list why because it it first calls this condition this if condition if two in list one it checks that is two there in the list one but no two isn't there in this list one so it goes to another condition that if two not in list one then print no it's not in the list so it simply print me the output that is no it's not in the list okay so this is how we check the elements of a list that are these elements present in list or not using the if condition so I hope I made all these if, else and elif conditions clear to you that how we use them and what is the way to write the syntax and what is the way to write the code. Okay. Now I'm taking you to for loop. Okay. So let's zoom it a little. Fine. Now. Okay. Hold on. Let me just uncomment all these things. Okay. What I'm going to do is this for loop fine okay so here what i had done is that we are discussing about the for loops right okay 
so what i have done is that i have made a list one okay named it as list one and i have given these three names inside this that is lena mira and samira okay i have made a list and i had used curl uh, this large bracket so it is a list and i have given three names here that is lena mira and samira now if i want to access every element of my list okay so so far what we have seen that in the list topic that if we want to access the elements of our list simply we were writing hold on let me write it here only simply we were writing print list one okay and we were running our program and what output were we give were we getting so we were getting this whole output like this whole thing that is these braces and after that in the middle we were getting these lena mira and samira all the three names and now when i am going to access all the elements of all the items of my list one so what's the way here we are going to use the for loop and for using that what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write for and these all are the items of our list right so i'm going to write for item in list one okay for item in list one so list one is my list name which i have written here then i put a colon and after that when i entered i automatically get this space so this this is called the indentation okay and whenever you are not keep giving this space say i wrote it like this okay and when i'm going to write this i'm going to get an error that is indentation error okay let me show you only this thing see what i got here is the indentation error expected an indented block so this is how we make mistakes and you need to take care of all these things using uh, writing your programs okay so here we give the indentation of four spaces okay so now here what i wrote is for item in list 1 print item okay so i'm going to print all the items which are present in my list but see the difference that what's going to be the difference here okay so what i did here is anything okay i'm so sorry just let hold on and let me okay done so now i'm going to run this once more and see what's the output i got here as lena mira and samira okay and this and when i'm going to uncomment this print list one also and now i'm going to run both the things so now see the difference this when i'm going to print list one okay which we have learned in the list topic that how to print that list so how i'm getting the output is these braces and in brackets i'm going to getting the i'm going to get the items that is lena mira and samira and when i used my for loop for item in list 1 print list 1 then i'm getting every name in a single line like once in the one line i'm going to get lena in another line mira and in the third line i'm going to get samira so i hope you got the difference for printing the list only list and you after using the for loop and then printing our list so here just keep one thing in mind that when you want to print this list one then simply you need to write print list one and when you want to only print the items which are present in your list so like i wrote for item in list one then i need to print item here okay item not the list one okay so just let me comment it this out and i hope i got gave you a basic idea For using the for loops, okay. Now let's let's move to a forward. And here, what I had done is that I have taken one more list that is list one. And now these are the things that like uh, you can say the curly braces, the denotation. And now what I did is that I made a list inside a list. Okay, so this Lena comma five. This is also a list because I have separated it using these large braces. Okay. so this is also a list and now what here i have made is a list inside a list so these braces which are uh, the outside only at the outside these are the first list and inside this this and this mira comma 2 and this mira comma 10 these are the other list 
so this is known as making a list inside a list okay so now when i'm i wrote lena and let's say lena eats five chocolates so for that i'm right i'm not going to put any coal in here right as we were putting in the dictionaries so th that that is a way of defining a dictionary and if i want to add any element in my list also then what i'm going to write is i'm going to write the name and then i'm going to put the comma and then i'm going to write the value okay so this is let's say lena eats five chocolates and let's say mira eats two chocolates and let's say samira eats 10 chocolates so i made a list for that and now when i'm going to access this using the for loop so how do i need to access is that i need to use this for and after that i need i need to write item item are the names that is lena mira and samira and after that i am going to write the chocolate so this chocolate is basically point to the integer numbers that i have written in my list that is 5 2 and 10 okay so the whole line is like for item comma chocolates in list 1 and then i put this colon and then what i write is that print and in braces i wrote item comma chocolate so now here in the previous example i only told you how to access the item from a list and in this example i'm telling you how to access the item as well as the value from a list so this is the way for writing like for item comma chocolates in list one please print item comma chocolates and when i'm going to run it see the output what i got is lena 5, Mira 2 and so Mira 10. So this output says that Lena eats 5 chocolates, Mira eats 2 chocolates and Samira eats 10 chocolates. Okay, so this is how we use the for loop in our programs. Okay, so I explained this for loop and if you have listened all my words very clearly then you are not going to face any of the errors in this for loop also. Okay. Now, after discussing about the for loops, let's, let's move to while loop. And yeah, this while loop is a very, you can say, very easy topic and very small topic. So, let's say I want to print all the numbers from, uh, let's say from 0 till 45. Okay, right. So, what I did here is that I had taken a variable that is a and assigned it a value as 0. Okay, and just hold on, let me practice right see a is equal to 0 and after that when I'm going to use this condition now here I'm going to give a condition using my while loop that till the point the value which is stored in a is less than 45 just print me that value did you hear my words okay let me repeat it like here i had given a condition for while that till the value which is stored in a is less than 45 then print me that value so now what it is it is going to do it is going to print me all the values from you can say from 0 till 44 okay so for and after that what i used a is equal to a plus one so basically this is called the increment now here i am incrementing the a value and let me show you how let me take you to the one note and hold on let me take it down and let me take a little thinner pen okay right so what what was the condition which we were writing like our condition was a is equal to zero and then we were using our while loop right and in bracket, I was using a less than 45. And what I was writing is the print a. And then I was drawing a is equal to a plus 1. So now, how is the working of this while loop? Like, I had taken a value that is a. Okay? I have stored a value that is 0 in a. So now, this 0 will go into my while loop, the a. Okay? Now, 0 is less than 45, right? So, this condition will be true. And hold on, I'm going to tell you. Okay, so this 0 will go to a, a. Okay, now 0 is less than 45. This condition is true. So, it is going to it is going to get inside this loop. 
and it is going to print me zero from here okay so now after that the zero will go to here okay and here it is that zero plus one so now after that my the the value which is a which is in a is one so this one will go here okay again here right and yes the one is also less than 45 so from here after that i am going to get one now again it will come to this side and now it is it will it will work like this that a is equal to 1 plus 1 now the my value of a is updated to 2 okay and now it will again go to my while loop that is here and yes 2 is also less than 45 so it is going to again print me the output that is 2 so this is how my while loop is going to work and it is going to print me like 0 1 2 and it is going to print me till 44 and when my condition 44 will come let's say my a value is updated to 44 and let uh, okay my a value is updated to 45 it is it has printed me the output as 44 and now my a value is updated to 45 now my a value the 45 value will go here this side okay and now it will check that is 45 less than 45 no the condition is false here okay so it will not get that true condition it will get a false condition and my loop will stop and i will get the final output from 0 till 44 okay so this is how the while loop works and now let me take it to pie charm and now let me run it okay so see i got the output till 44 and okay hold on let me zoom it and let me take you firstly to the upside so it started from zero right zero one two three four and it is it is still goes to 44 so this is how the while loop works and this is how the while loop functions i hope this thing must be clear to you now okay so this one right so now here in this video only i have told you about the if else and elif conditions now there is one more way to write this if else condition and that is called the shorthand if else okay so now let me tell you how we write and let me after that i'm going to tell you that why we don't write this why we don't use this in our program okay so let's say i wanted to write a program here see if i wanted to write a program if a is greater than b then print greater okay and otherwise else print b is greater so this was my program which i wanted to write that if a is greater than b print a is greater else print b is greater so how we are going to write this in the shorthand if else condition like i'm going to take a variable that is a and ask the user for the input okay so i'm asking for the user i'm asking the user for the integer input that is i have written int here okay now i'm going to do the same thing for b also i have taken a variable that is b and what i'm going to do is that i had written int that is i'm going to take the user's input that is integer value done and now here i want to write my conditions for a and b like i want to write if a is greater than b print a is greater so there are two methods to write the same thing here if i only want to write one condition that is if a is greater than b so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to write if a is greater than b colon and after that i'm going to in the same line i'm going to write print and in this semi quotes i'm going to write a is greater right so this is the way how we write only and only if condition so here i haven't used else because sometimes we use we need to use only and only if conditions it is not necessary that wherever i have used if condition i should also use else no it's not necessary somewhere i would be using only and only if condition but where i have used the i can't use this else condition singly okay for that else i need to write this if also okay so now when i'm going to run it and i'm saying that enter a number a and let's say i entered three okay and now i'm going to enter a smaller number than three that is two so i just get giving me the output that a is greater right 
So I hope you got the idea how to write this if condition in a shorthand like this. Now, if I want to write if and else both conditions in the shorthand if else like, so what I'm going to do is that firstly, I'm going to write my print statement for that condition that if my condition is true, for that I'm going to write my print line, print output that is. So here I wrote if A greater than B, right? So if so, if this side I'm going to write the condition for that this my condition that is if greater than B satisfies, then I'm going to get this output. So here I wrote print A is greater than B and I wrote this if A greater than B, right? And besides this A greater than B condition, I wrote else and then I wrote the second condition that if my uh, this if condition is false then it will come to my else and it will print me that B is greater than A. Okay. Okay. Let, let me let me revise this once. Like I had written a condition if A greater than B. Okay. So if I when I am going to enter the numbers if my this condition that is a greater than b is true then it is going to give me this output so in this line what i wrote is print a is greater than b okay and after that this condition that is a greater than b i wrote else okay and then in if my if condition is going to be false then my else condition is going to give the output that is print b is greater than a okay so in the in the previous uh, in the previous you can say we were studying the previous topic this if else condition there i was writing the conditions like if a greater than b then print a is greater as print b is greater right so here i have done the same thing print a is greater than b and if a greater than b else print b is greater the only difference is that i have written all the things in a single line so this is the name for the shorthand if else now let's let one run once run this and then i'm going to tell you disadvantage for this okay so it is asking me to enter the number a and firstly i'm going to make if condition true so i'm going to enter true so now I'm getting the output that A is greater than B and yes, it's true because 4 is greater than 2, right? And now I'm going to give the wrong outputs for the else condition output, okay? So now I'm going to give the A, a you can say A is smaller value. So let's say I wrote 3 and for B, I'm going to give the larger value. So my, my if condition will not satisfy here because... 3 isn't greater than 4, right? So I'm going to get the output that B is greater than A. So I hope I made this uh, shorthand if it's clear to you. And now I'm going to tell you that why we don't use, the, like, let's say you are uh, working with a team, okay? You are working on any project and there you are going to write the if else conditions, okay? You will uh, writing a program in which you will need if else conditions. So if, I, if you are going to write the shorthand if else, so what's your thinking that will 90% of your group members be able to understand that what have you written? No, the, they will not be able to understand because it's a very complicated thing and basically it is not used anywhere. This is only the shorthand if else. Like if you want to write the whole condition in one line, then you can write, but I will never prefer you to write this use the shorthand if else conditions because we write a program in a way that everyone can read and everyone can understand that what code are we go are we writing and what is the main motive of our code but when you are going to use write the shorthand if else condition it is a bit complicated and most of your friends or the ones who are working with you in the project are not going to understand this so after that, if any one of you, any one of your friends are not going to understand, then what's the use of writing it, right? 
so we never use the shorthand if it's condition but this was a topic in python so that's why i covered and i don't want to leave any of the topics uncovered so this is the re only reason that i told you about the shorthand if it's condition but i will never say you to use this conditions okay so this is here we completed our this lecture so let, let me summarize that what we studied firstly we studied about the dictionaries that how we make dictionaries let me take you to the same slide only so this is how we declare dictionaries in the curly braces then i told you how to print that dictionary then i told you how to access the elements of a dictionary okay then i told you how to add an element into your dictionary then i told you how to delete that element then we saw that how to get the uh, you can say get the element of a of a key and after that i told you how to update your elements and at last i told you how to print the keys in of your dictionary okay after that we have moved on to if else conditions and this condition i uh, i told you about taking two variables and the third was taking the input from the user after that we had taken some conditions like if var3 is greater than var2 then print greater else if var3 is equal equal var2 print equal else print lesser so this was the if else and else condition example which i had taken to explain you and okay the, uh, then after that i had taken this list example also in which i declared a list and i used this if condition that if two in list one print yes it's in the list if two not in list one print no it's not in the list so this is how we ended up with the if else and elif conditions then i had told you about the for loop and in for loop i had taken one more list that is list one and given the elements as lena mira and samira in this list after that using the for loop we have accessed all the items of our list then what i have taken i have taken the same list and i had made a list inside a list in which i have given the number of chocolates these girls eat so i said that let's say lena eats five chocolates mira eats two and samira eats 10 chocolates so after that we had seen how to access the elements as well as the chocolates from our list okay so this is how we studied for loop then i told you how the while loop works we have taken an example like say let's say i had given a value 0 to a and then i had put this while condition and this while condition was printing me the output till the value a is less than 45 so it was giving me the output from 0 till 44 and here i told you about the increment and in one note i told you how this while loop works and what is the functioning of this while loop after that we moved on to the shorthand if else i told you how to simply use if condition in a short way and how to use if else condition in a short way and i also told you why not to use this if else shorthand conditions so i hope i made all these things clear to you about the dictionary if else and elif condition for loop while loop and shorthand if else so if there are any doubts you can refer me in the comment box or you can even rewatch this video and don't forget to like subscribe and share my channel so this is all for this video till then thank you and bye bye